Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I want to show you my version of a cartoon effect inside of Photoshop. I am going to be giving you an action file that you can import into Photoshop and just hit play. So I'll show you how to install an action and do all of that stuff. But what I wanted to do before that is show you the types of images that are best for this cartoon effect. Now I'm looking at a an image right here that is uh, almost monotone except for this section right here, but it's pretty pretty monotone uh, image, but it has a lot of detail in it. So this one would be a good candidate for a cartoon effect. So I'm going to show you what the cartoon looks like on this. You can see you get good outline here, which is what we're looking for with the cartoon style. You want that nice dark outline on there. You could even add even more outline and contrast, which I'll show you how to do here in a minute. Now this isn't part of the action. So with the action, you're going to get a result like this. Uh, but if you feel like you need more, I'm going to show you later on in the video how to add this as well. This one, monochrome, but it has a lot of detail, so it is a good candidate for something like this. So this one does have a lot of muted tones in it, but there is definitely contrast here. So her arm to the sky, the shirt, probably this area right here is the most uh, similar to the background. But you've got contrast here you know definitely the shadows in her fingers a lot of areas in her face and then the contrast of the hair in the background are good this isn't the best but it is gonna work in an image like this because you have contrast with the background so i went ahead and added this uh, detail layer here just to get some more detail out of the hair area you can see the difference there and the third one I want to show you is this one. This one I don't think uh, is a really good image for a cartoon effect because there's not a lot of detail. We do have fine detail in the hair, but there's almost no detail in the background because it's a portrait. So they've blurred out the background. But right around here, these areas that start fading out or, you know, blurring out, are probably not going to be the best to use for something like this. So I'm going to show you what this looks like with it turned on. It's not too bad. The, the hair looks really good with this. You know, you have all of this fine detail in the hair and I love the freckles, the eyebrows, the eyes, even the lips look really good here, but you're just not getting that cartoon effect. And I think mostly because of this blurred area over here and then back here and then this one there's tons of detail tons of stuff going on in the background and right here in her face her hair color is really good the contrast is really good so this this is a perfect image for something like this so i'm going to go ahead and turn that on and show you what that looks like i'm going to actually record an action here just so that you can see how that works if you're not interested in learning how to build this, you can download the action file. What I'm going to do is just kind of go over all of these. I'm actually just going to delete that layer and we're going to start over with this first layer. So I already have my action here. This is the thumbnail right here for actions. If you don't see that on the side, if you don't use them very often, you can come up here to window and then actions from here and that's going to bring up your actions as well. So in order to create an action, we're just going to come here to the little plus symbol and I'm going to call this cartoon demo and I'm going to put it in, I guess I'll put it in cartoon. And if you use this style a lot, you can assign it a function key. I'm not going to do that. Um, and then I'm going to just press record and then we'll go ahead and start recording the action. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is right click and convert this to a smart object. Since this is going to be an action, I want you to be able to go back and make adjustments to all of these things because every image is going to be different. So you'll get a different outcome with each one. So just having that smart object there is going to allow you to make changes to everything that we do here. So the first thing I'm going to do after I've uh, created a smart object is come here to image at the top, adjustments and we're going to adjust the shadows on here. So I'm going to change this to 50% and then the highlights we'll go ahead and leave at 0% and I'll click OK for that. Now I'm going to come in here to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask and I'm going to start with a really big number. So I'm going to go like 150 
and our radius will be about six and I'll leave the threshold at zero. So we're gonna gradually come down from this number, but we're gonna be doing a lot of repetitive things. That's why it's best to just have an action for something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. All right, now we're gonna come back in here to Filter, Stylize, and Oil Paint. Okay, inside of Oil Paint, I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the stylization to about five. I'm going to leave that cleanliness at 10 because I don't like all those little swirly lines. This is really going to be up to you, but this is this is really preference. And then I'm going to take my scale to about 4. Bristle detail I'm leaving at 0. Lighting, you can go ahead and leave that checked off. Uh, we're not going to be using shine or angle for this. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to come back in and add another mask, so filter sharpen unsharp mask and then this time we're going to come down to 100 percent and our radius i'll take down to four and the threshold i'll leave at zero i'm going to go ahead and click ok i'm going to come up here to filter noise reduce noise just to get it as clean as possible i'll go ahead and leave the strength at five everything else at 0%. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to come back in here to Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. Again, just to get it a little bit cleaner here. I'll go ahead and leave the radius at 20 pixels, our threshold at 10. That's fine. Go ahead and click OK. And that's just smoothing this out again. We're still keeping those nice detailed lines. You can see those like right here in her hands and her lips, her eyes, just smoothing out a lot of the bigger surfaces there. Okay, now I'm gonna come in here to image again, adjustments, and I'm just gonna adjust the levels right away. I'm gonna use auto level, and I'm gonna click okay. The reason I'm adjusting the levels like that is because I know that this is for an action and it's gonna be used on multiple images. This one, you know, you're not seeing much of a, of a difference there, but it is really going to make a difference for a lot of images. Okay, next we're going to come into Filter, Filter Gallery. And let me go ahead and zoom out here so you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to be using Poster Edges. It's already selected here, but you get to that uh, right here in the Artistic folder. If you just click on that little arrow and you'll choose Poster Edges right there. What I'm doing is just kind of enhancing those outlines. We're going to leave our edge thickness at zero, our edge at one, and posterization we'll leave at two. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and add another surface blur just to kind of blend these colors in a little bit more. So I'm going to come here to filter, blur, surface blur. I'm going to take the threshold to 30 and I'll go ahead and leave this at 15. And click OK there. All right, now I'm gonna come back into Filter. We're gonna to go to Stylize and we'll do Oil Paint one more time. For the Oil Paint, this time we're gonna bring this down to about three and our scale to about two and a half. We'll leave the bristle detail at zero and go ahead and click OK for that one. Now we'll come back in with an, an unsharp mask. So that's Filter, Sharpen, unsharp mask and I'm going to bring this down to about 80 percent for this last one and then I'll bring our radius down to two and a half threshold at zero and I'm going to go ahead and click OK and because we are working with the skin tone I'm actually going to add a vibrance layer here too so I'm going to come here to image adjustments and we're going to add that vibrance in there so I'm just going to bring this up about 50 or so. So just to add more color in there but protect the the skin tone. So we'll go ahead and add that. And now that we're done with that I can come back in here to the action and then just hit the little square right here. That's going to stop the recording. And you can see now that we've created this. So if I just wanted to export this right here, so if I come in here to the three lines, 
save actions is disabled or it's grayed out right now so I can't save this outside of Photoshop what I'm gonna have to do is come here to the folder and put it in its own folder okay so now uh, cartoon 2 I have a cartoon 2 folder I'm gonna drag this inside of that folder and now if I choose the folder itself I can come up here to the three little lines and you can see that save actions is now available so all I have to do is click save actions save it somewhere on my computer and I can share that or keep it outside of Photoshop if I ever need it for uh, uploading an action that you already have saved on your computer all you have to do is come back to the same little uh, hamburger menu right here and choose load actions and then just grab the action from where you saved it on your computer and that will load it right into Photoshop here. Don't forget to go over to prettywebs.com to grab that action file. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description. I do want to take this one step further. This image right here doesn't really need it but we're going to do it anyway just to give you an idea of how I would add even more detail to an image. So what I'm going to do is uh, just click on the layer right here, Command and J to copy that layer. And I'm going to add another filter to this. So I'm going to come up here to Filter, Other, and High Pass. This is just adding some more outline detail. You can see how it's picking up really strongly all of these shadow areas and all of the outline. I'm going to go ahead and leave the radius at 12 pixels. This will of course depend on the image that you're working with. Uh, but for this one I'll go ahead and leave it there. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to come up here to the blend mode and I'm going to change this to overlay. So this is adding a lot of outline and detail to this. So if you like this look, you can definitely go that step further. Or if you have an image that doesn't have a lot of contrast, this is a way that you can get some of that contrast back. 